Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and if you stuck around at the end of last week's vlog you would know I've got no idea what I'm going to read next. Absolutely none. Not a clue. I literally just finished wrapping up last week's vlog and now we're going to start this week's and we've no idea what we're reading. So oh one thing for definite that I want to try and start today is Water in the Soul by Courtney Pepper Pepper now. This is the poetry collection and poetry is not something I've ever really read apart from when I had to for school. Um, I'm really hoping I do enjoy this but we'll see, we'll see. Oh I just saw illustrations. Ooh. Ooh that's nice. I like that. Okay so yeah we're gonna see how we get on with it. I would like to start this today maybe even just a couple because some of them are a bit longer some of them are a bit shorter oh look at this oh love that okay yeah so i think today we're at least going to read like these two maybe see how we feel about them so I definitely want to do that before i start work but then the rest of it i don't i don't know do i start with a classic and go with like northanger abbey or do we go with i don't feel like reading the big book i literally just finished a big book i don't want to read another big book so it's not going to be helen of troy which is the one i thought i was going to start off with but maybe we'll save that for next week i don't know all i do know is that we're definitely going to be starting off with this one that's for definite um and i would like to make it so that each day i read a few pages of this just to be able to get through it throughout the month and I am looking forward to it, even though I'm nervous because poetry. Yeah, okay, we d I don't know. I think I think the choices are going to be between Mad Woman's Ball by Victoria Mars or Northanger Abbey, which is all the way over there, which I'm, I'm not going to go get it. I'm just not. So I think that's going to be the choices today of what we bring to work, but that's going to have to be dealt with. And I'll probably just pick up whatever one's closest. This one is quite short, though. Hmm. It's only 210 pages. Well, that's quite good. I suppose I could start off with something short. I don't know. I don't know. I've just... I don't know. So that's the start of this weekly vlog is, hello, I hope you're all doing well, and I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's one of those. It's one of those. I mean, to be fair, I have done seven nights in a row and technically not even had a day off between them because I finished work yesterday morning and I'm starting work this afternoon. So I haven't really had any time off between the two of them. So I think just something that's easy and relaxing and just we'll see. We'll see. I have my list. I do need to get through it. I am definitely going to be reading something off this list. So I do think it's going to probably end up being Mad Woman's Ball or if I can be bothered to go and get it Northanger Abbey. Maybe Mad Woman's Ball because I feel like less concentration? Maybe? I don't know. I think think we'll just see on that one um but for now that was it the, the, this is the start of the vlog and um i know it was just a bit of a mess really but yeah i hope i hope you are all doing well let me know what you've been reading this week and if you enjoy poetry because i feel like if i enjoy this i'm going to want more recommendations clearly so if you do read poetry or if you've even read this one and you know of other poetry collections that are similar and everything i would really appreciate it if you put something in the comments below just to help with that because i'm really hoping i enjoy this but i did struggle with poetry at school i just could never really gel with it and i don't know if that's just because of the type of poetry that we were having to focus on i'm not sure but I would just I'd really like to like this so yeah if you have any suggestions for anything else please put them in the comments below and I would definitely try and check them out even if I'm not 100% on this one because I feel like poetry is something that would be great to get into just because it's I I see poetry as this beautiful thing and that can connect with emotions and that just sounds perfect you if you do read poetry pop it in the comments below and if you don't why don't you that's the question. But right now, I need to stop rambling. I have actually got things to do before I go to work, so I best get on with those. I guess probably update you tomorrow morning with whatever book I took to work and um, how we're getting on with that. <laughs>
was going to update yesterday, except I ended up sleeping for 12 hours and woke up with one hour to literally get ready for work, like have a shower and everything. It was a bit crazy. Clearly I needed the sleep. Like I didn't bother setting alarm because I didn't have work until the afternoon. So I don't normally set an alarm on those days. So I was like, it's fine because I naturally tend to wake up about eight o'clock anyway. And yeah, 12 hours, 12 hours. I didn't even go to bed that late. Like, that's fine. It's fine. Honestly, it was needed and I felt so good. But today we did have an alarm because it meant that I didn't get anything done yesterday and I've got food shopping to do, I've got editing to do, I've got all these things to do before work. We need to get on it. Now, the two books I am actually reading, one of them you know because I did say I was going to start watering the soul and this is so beautiful. I'm loving it. I'm only on page 16 at the moment but it is really, really lovely. And this is the type of thing that depending on your mental space at the time, you'll pick up different things to take with you. I also love the illustrations that are in this. It's absolutely beautiful. And this book is broken down into different parts. There's a whole two page preface to this poetry book where it's explaining how this person or technically you have gone into this forest and you're lost and you don't know who you are or what you're going to do and you're just feeling very down and sad and so you meet this creature and this creature is going to show you how to grow your soul how to look after it and just learn to take it easy and then the poems follow that trend and it's beautiful absolutely beautiful i really am enjoying it i am underlining things i've actually done a post-it note on one of them because i absolutely loved it so you will get some proper poems and some which are just these paragraphs and they're just they're lovely they're absolutely lovely and yeah i think it's beautiful absolutely beautiful and I'm definitely dog earing pages that I know I'm going to want to come back to if I'm ever feeling down or something but yeah the writing itself is just gorgeous and it really is just a reminder to take it slow and you know not every single poem I'm really connecting to but I am finding it more to do with how I'm approaching the poem as well it's just yeah it's lovely it's lovely to take a few moments every day to just read a couple of these poems so yeah definitely going to be continuing on with that this month and it's just a really nice reminder that it's okay to slow down to take your time and to relax and forgive yourself and just lovely little things like that so yeah very very lovely and then something that is on the complete opposite end of that spectrum is the mad woman's ball by victoria mars so i ended up deciding to go with this one mainly because it's the one i take off my shelves and i was like it's off my shelves that's it it's coming to work and wow is it amazing i'm only on page 123 it's fantastic it's so so good i have been annotating my way through this my camera does not pick it up but i have been writing underlining things it's so so good so this one is set in 1885 paris and we are this is actually done by a french author so it has been translated which i didn't realize until i opened up and then you saw that it was translated and the translator is frank Wynne. i do wish they put that maybe on the front or something because i feel like the translator should also get recognition or at least a bit more than what they do inside the book Anyway, tangent aside, so this is actually done by a French author and we are set in Paris 1885 and we're following an actual asylum, so part of Paris's history. And what I like about that is you have actual doctors that worked in this asylum, you have actual things that are going on in around the years of 1885 and you do have a little notes bit at the back where it does say different people, the years that they worked there, what they were known for and everything. So I think that adds an extra level to this book. And this one is basically an outcry against how women are treated and definitely back then how they were treated so terribly, how this asylum was used as a way for just to have husbands or fathers and stuff just ship off women that were just deemed unacceptable or pushed out against the boundaries or demasculated them in some way and it's just brutal but brilliant we're following a few different characters i would say this is quite a 
flowing narrative almost like a stream of consciousness where you're following different people but it works really really well so you have the, our first one which is Genevieve and she is a nurse at this asylum and she truly believes in what they're doing really believes that they are progressing science and medicine and just wholeheartedly loves it and even says how she sees doctors as gods in a way but eventually things start happening and she starts seeing things in a slightly different way but it's a very very slow change. Then you have Yushi, sorry I'm gonna pronounce this wrong but I'll put the name up here and she is the daughter of this lawyer, they are quite upper class, they're quite wealthy. She is constantly pushing out against the confines of her life. She doesn't want to just be married off and she knows that in her father's eyes the only value that she carries is the value that she will bring to a marriage and she's just like I don't want this life, I don't want that. There was this whole big part actually where I just pretty much underlined the whole page. It was it was so good. Very much is just like, this is not the life for me and she's very angry against it, against that's her lot in life and she's just like, I want more than this and she's just like, a life spent seeing nothing but her reflection in the mirror, assuming that she still sees herself there and that's kind of how she views marriage and that, that she would just end up being this ghost of a person. So she's constantly pushing out against the boundaries, constantly vexing her father because he's just like, women should be meek and do as they're told and his daughter is clearly not doing that. But then you also have someone, like you have a few perspectives within the asylum itself, one of them being Louise and Louise is this really young girl and she came there three years before, so she came there when she was 13 and she's someone that developed quite quickly into a womanly body with breasts and hips and things and unfortunately her uncle then forced himself on her but it was the thing that actually broke her the most about all of this is the fact that her aunt then blamed her saying how she led him on and all of this and she just had a breakdown and couldn't deal with it and so they shipped her off to this asylum and it's things like that and you do learn the different women that have been there, the different reasons why they are there and how not all of it but the majority of it is because they have been mistreated in some way by the men in their lives and it's just it's horrible. You also get parts where they focus on the different treatments that they have and honestly it's brutal, it's horrible, it's basically torture that they just prettied up and said oh this is for science and medicine. It's about that and also even our nurse Genevieve knows that she has to be careful because it won't take much to have her then put in this place because she knows that a lot of the women that are there are there for the stupidest of reasons and so this book really is an outcry against all of that. It's, it's amazing, it's not what I expected. I for some reason kind of got into my head that this was going to be a more fantastical thing and it's definitely not, it's definitely historical fiction. There was this one part where Eugene, she's talking about wearing a corset and she says the sole purpose of the corset was clearly to immobilise a woman's body in a posture considered desirable. As if intellectual constraints were not sufficient, women had to be hobbled physically. One might almost think that in imposing such restrictions, men did not so much scorn women as fear them. And there's a lot of comments like that throughout this, as well as commentary on social class and things like that. Like, it packs a lot into such a small book. So I'm hoping that I'll finish this out today, but it has been busy at work the last few days. I've got about 80 pages left to go, so we'll see. Fingers crossed I can finish that one, but it's, it's really good. Honestly, I think I'm starting July it's reading really, really well. We've just got two amazing books and amazing in very different ways. And then I have some clothing. We have more clothing. This is going to be the last of it for a while. I know I said that before but I genuinely mean it mainly because I don't have any more room and I cannot think of anything that I else possibly need but what these are, these are all tops to go with the long skirts that I got a few weeks ago. I have to admit they're just, the long skirts and that are just something that I really like and I did want to wear them with jumpers like this but it's been really hot I know I'm wearing a jumper today but it's meant to get hotter later and I realised I had no no tops to wear with these uh, so I decided to treat myself, get a few tops just to wear with those skirts and then that's me done for clothing. Probably until autumn winter time where the jumpers come back out and then I'll be like pretty jumpers but 
that's it. Although you guys do seem to like all my clothing hauls and when I try them on the stuff, which is great, but it's getting expensive, so no more. But yeah, I thought I'd share with you the different tops that I got, and then obviously I'll do a little try-on clip just to show you what I sort of thing I'm going for, and I feel like this is a lot more me, a lot more just, I look at this and I feel a lot more comfortable. The anime girl type stuff that I did last time, I like, and it's fun, but I do feel a bit more self-conscious when I'm wearing those, so that's going to take a bit more getting used to, so it's nice just to have some clothes that I just... I know that I enjoy. Anyway, we got this beautiful one with a little daisy. Daisies are actually my favourite flowers, which I know they're technically a weed, but they are my absolute favourites. So yeah, got this one, beautiful green colour. Just, it is spring and summer encaptured in a top, in my opinion. You're going to find out that a lot of these tops are very, very similar. That's just the things on them change. So like this one, we've got a little line of dinosaurs, because I thought it was cute. This is one that I really liked, and it's a little mushroom. That's so cute. I think that's going to go with the brown skirt really well. Like, I absolutely loved that. It's a shame that this is, like, printed on, but hopefully it will stay on okay. And then, of course, a little cat one, because cats are cute. So, had to go for that. That looked adorable. Oh, and then we got this one, which I really liked. Again, I think that's going to go really well with nice brown skirt. Oh, I treat myself to a little hairband because that was just adorable. <laughs> I thought it was super cute. So yeah, I've, I've got that. So the last top I got was this one, which is just a bit more playful than that, which again should still go with the skirts. These are very creased this time and I hate ironing. But it looks like we're going to have to do some ironing. But yeah, so I didn't get loads, literally just a couple top, but for now I have got some editing to do. I will do a clothing try on so that you can have a little look as to how they all look together with those skirts that I keep talking about. And um, yeah, all right, I, I best get going. <laughs> to update yesterday but um that didn't happen either <laughs> this time not because i overslept but just because i didn't sleep at home instead after work on wednesday i actually came home got changed and then went to my partner's house so it was great because then it meant that in the morning we didn't have to like i didn't have to wait for him to wake up and that because i was already with him so it was really nice and he actually woke up pretty early but that's because he's been on earlies a week so he wasn't happy about it but that's fine. <laughs> we had a really nice day. We went out, walked the dog first before heading up to central London, just because honestly, it worked out as our only full day off together for the month. So we decided to spend that in our favorite place, which is London. And we had lunch out together, which you would have seen with the pizza. It's great. That pizza is a massive deep pan pizza. So the crust is like this, but the base is like this but the fill-ins fill it up. So it's it's just huge. It's really fun, really cheesy. But yesterday, while I was out, I did pick up a couple of books. I didn't plan on this. Well, I tell a lie. One book I plan to pick up, and that is Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. And this is because I'm doing a buddy read with Bibbidi Bobbidi Books, who I have linked below. She is such a lovely, bubbly person. She was talking about how much she wanted to read this book in her mid-year wrap-up. And I said, oh, I'd really want to read that too. And she was like, let's buddy read. And so that's what we're going to be doing next month. So I had to pick up a copy. Now, I don't normally do hardbacks, but this is actually a really small hardback. It is the size of a paperback so I actually don't mind it like if they're small hardbacks I'm fine with it it's when they're the big hardbacks that I don't enjoy anyway I don't know too much about this book the reason why I got excited about it is because of Elliot Brooks again have a link below and she was talking about how much she loved this book how it just made her so happy in a way that a book hasn't for a little while and that instantly intrigued me so we're following a I think it's two sisters. One of them has been married to somebody to save them for like political alliances and stuff, but he is a horrible, 
horrible person and so her sister is trying to save her but because of all the political things it's going to put her family in danger if she does it a certain way so she enlists the help of a witch there's a chicken involved like it just seems like a really dark tale but one that should be also fun because of this chicken like I have to admit it's the chicken that's that's got me intrigued which is a weird thing to say but I am intrigued by the chicken I think it's possessed which sounds amazing <laughs> so yeah I'm hoping that this will be just a nice light fun read for next month especially because I do have a set read a month I want to do so having a buddy read will just be a nice little breakup for that which talking about the set reading this might give you a little bit of a hint as to what it's going to be and that's the tale of Genji again I didn't plan on getting this but we were in Japan center because I wanted to get some Japanese mayonnaise it's the best kind um and I saw this because they always have a book section. I always have a look because they have a lot of translated books there. They also have just pure Japanese books, but I, unfortunately I can't read Japanese. But this, I saw this and it's the authentic first translation of the world's earliest novel. And that was just like, that's it, I'm sold, I want it. I don't even know too much what this is about. It says on the back that obviously this came centuries before Shakespeare and Chaucer marks the birth of the novel and how this work continues to influence writers and enchant readers and Prince Genji, so the person that this book is about, influenced the ideal should be for men in Japanese society. I'm intrigued, I'm genuinely intrigued. And so this is by Lady Marasaki Shikibu. I'm sorry, I should have check that pronunciation before I came on here. What I also love is it has the translator on the cover. But this should be a little bit of a hint, but I'm not gonna say anything else more than that. See in the comments below if you can guess what next month's gonna be focused around. This wasn't one of the books I was going to read, but now I feel like it should be. There is also an introduction, so the actual story isn't that long, but as usual you have an introduction because this is a classic book being the earliest novel. And then when I got home, actually my mum surprised me with a book and she had gone to the local town, gone to the different charity shops and found this. And this is my dear Cassandra and it's letters from Jane Austen to her sister Cassandra and I'm so excited for it. I've been saying that I'm really interested in non-fiction, I want to do more reading about it and I was thinking about different authors that I would like to read books upon and one of them was Jane Austen, the other one being Charlotte Bronte. So this was an amazing find. It's also illustrated and it's done with different paintings and that, that would have been reminiscent at the time of when Jane Austen was alive. It's just, it's amazing and I'm so, so excited. I read the introduction to this already. So this isn't all of the letters but it is some selected ones that are at key points for her life. So when her her first book was being published and you'll get her reactions to that which I'm very excited about and also just little commentary here and there on the war because this was all obviously Jane Austen was alive during the Napoleonic Wars and everything that happens as a result of that. I think it's going to be an amazing amazing book to read and I can't believe she found it second hand like that's amazing. Oh while I was in a uh, Forbidden Planet they had The Dragon's Promise because I got I don't think I said but I got Nettle and Bone from Forbidden's Planet but they had an exclusive early sample of The Dragon's Promise by Elizabeth Lim, which is her second book in her duology that started off with Six Crimson Cranes. Very excited. So of course, had to get that because hello, it's cute and I'm so excited for this book. It's gonna be amazing. Let's actually talk about what I've been reading for the last couple of days. Yesterday, nothing, read nothing. Not, not, not a single thing. But Wednesday, I did finish The Mad Woman's Ball and I loved this. This was so good, so, so good. I, yeah, I loved it. It's such a bitter sweet ending with emphasis on the bitter. I felt really, really bad for Louise with everything that was gonna happen to her, that did happen to her, and you just, you really, really wanted to stop it from happening, but it did happen. And I just, I'm being vague, but I just, <sighs> that was heartbreaking. The series of events that happens around Genevieve and Eugene and how they work together, the result of all of that. Again, it's just, 
There's so, so much in this book and I've already said that it is that outcry of femininity, the frustrations on how controlled women were, how their worth was valued like by men, how they determined their worth. And then there is an author's note at the back which I really recommend reading as well because Victoria talks about the reason why she created this novel and what started it all and then what she was trying to do with it, the parallels that she was trying to draw between today's society to society back then. They are parallels that I'd already made but it was really nice to see the author go, no this is what I was definitely trying to do. So in case you did miss anything she has highlighted it and so if you could go back and reread the book you would see those a bit more. But it was just, it was so so good and I just, this was so much better than expected and it was so hard hitting but done so well and it was such an interesting look at what it would have been like for women during that time and how they were treated in asylums and how all of this was seen as such a medical marvel and they were really improving everything but also it could just be seen as torture but just done for science like it's just there's so much so so much to unpack in this book and I think it's fantastic and for such a little one there really isn't an excuse not to read it. It's one that I feel needs so much more hype than what it's been getting. Like I have started on TikTok like not me creating stuff although I'm, I'm debating it. I've been watching stuff on TikTok. Do you find it a little bit samey after a little while? I'm not gonna lie. But you have a lot of books that get hyped up on there and I haven't seen anyone talking about this and even here on YouTube I haven't seen anyone talking about it and I don't know why because this is so good and so impactful like you really should be reading this book. So yeah th this needs more love and also the fact that you know translated fiction that's another thing that's becoming more and more popular at the moment so again even more reasons to read this please get on it. It's it's amazing. Very amazing. But there we are, there we are. I think, have I read any more of the poetry since I last updated? I know I didn't read any yesterday. I'm not sure. If I've already updated you to this point, we'll cut it out. And if I haven't, then well done me for actually updating. But we're now on page 24. And again, this has just been lovely. There was one that I really liked and that's talking about what happens when you're lost and the struggle that you have with just carrying on each day, but then it ending with you are more than just the struggle and the fact that you do carry on each day is what's so important. And it's just, it's little conversations about things like that. Like it's, it's nice and I think every so often we all need that reminder. So yeah, we're still really loving this. Um, I do plan on reading a little bit more before I go to work today because I do have work again today and tomorrow. And I think the book I'm going to take, let me get it down, it's up here, is going to be The Valley of Fear by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, which is the last Sherlock Holmes novel. I'm scared. <laughs> I don't want it to be over but at the same time I just want something that I can read for the next two days at work and this is going to be perfect for that. It's literally 200-ish pages and yeah I think it's going to be good. I'm really looking forward to it. Also scared because it is the last book. I also need a bit of a pick-me-up from reading The Mad Woman's Ball because it did. It just left me in a point where I was just sad because it's so hard-hitting so it, be aware of that going into it but it just it didn't make me cry or anything, but it just left me feeling a little bit like down, down, you know, down. So I think going to something that I know I find comforting and cozy and everything will be Sherlock Holmes, even though it's going to be a little bit bittersweet because I am finishing it. I still have all of these to reread whenever I want to. Plus after this, I do move on to Agatha Christie. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I really can't wait for this. See what happens. See if I actually manage to get it finished and obviously read a bit more of the poetry collection. This has been quite a long update. I apologize, but it was a fun day. Okay, we are gonna start rambling for way too long and I do actually need to cook some food for work and you know, the usual stuff. We need to get on with the day. So let's do it. Let, let's start. Oh, and did you like the outfits? I love them. They're the sort of clothes that I would wear if I just want to be comfortable and cozy and just I like them I really really like them and I think 
in winter time with jumpers and stuff it's going to work absolutely lovely so i am thinking i would like to get some more long skirts but we are not getting those yet not anytime soon as i said clothing we're gonna stop we're going on at least a we're in july so probably a couple month break before i buy any more clothes hopefully october because it should be going on holiday then so fingers crossed i will just do it there so yeah no more no more clothes shopping and why am i still talking i'm sorry we're gonna go i'm sorry <laughs> was debating whether I was going to wrap up this vlog in person or whether I was just going to do some sort of like fade to black moment but in all honesty those of you that do last this long support this channel a lot and it really does mean the world and you know what that kind of support kind of needed right now there's been a family emergency that happened on my dad's side of the family this weekend and uh, it comes as a massive shock because we didn't know that anything was really going on like anything was severe until we got the phone call and then it just progressed so quickly that it's just been a massive shock and i haven't picked up anything because of everything that's gone on and i feel like it's been ages ago that i actually last updated but i think it was literally i updated i'd cooked gone to work and on the train to work i then got the phone call and then everything's just been a massive blur since then and it's just yeah it's been a lot and i don't mean to like end on a downer at all but this is life <laughs> this is what happens and it's not great and it's not easy so i am ending this vlog i had planned to end it now anyway because i had wanted to do a whole book shopping video tomorrow where i go and support different independent bookshops within london starting a series on my channel where once a month we would go to a different part of london and have a look at the different independent bookshops that are there which is like that i really Really want to do but I just don't feel up to it to be quite honest so that's probably gonna come maybe towards the end of the month maybe beginning of July like we're in July maybe beginning of August like we'll see I feel bad ending it like this but also I really didn't want to waste the footage that I've already got for this week I really enjoyed the start of this week and I was really happy with everything and yeah I just felt like you guys should have a bit of a reason why I haven't read anything and if next week's vlog like the energy levels are lower then you know why. The next video after this one which is the Sunday video that's already pre-filmed and stuff so that that's fine I will still make the time to edit that and do that and sort that out. Um, so yeah I haven't read anything this is the first time in a while where I've read hardly anything all week like I managed one book and a little bit of poetry but yeah I'm even thinking like I could pick up a book tonight but I'm just I'm not feeling that I just want to cozy up and watch some youtubers that make me feel happy and just chill out and then take tomorrow to just for myself and just yeah we will go from there my camera battery is also flashing at me like it's just it's not been the weekend <laughs> So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. But thank you so much if you have made it this far. I will see you in the next one.